What up, though? What up, though? Give a big shout out to Gabe Sent, SGN Tunes, Terrence, uh, J2 Official 412, Fonsworthy 1148. Uh, purple baby dot one one. Big shout out to Gold Brazy number four. Uh, bands that's the check. Jamarcus Cunningham. Dog the writer. KT Jones. OG spank them. Tyler McCann. Jeffrey Bills. Shadow Quinn say he's been rocking with me for two years. Jew One Sick Burr. I don't know what the hell they say. <laughs> Marty over East. And uh Old Master Chef. Rio Bolivian. And Don Health, big shout out to y'all. And King Costa, big shout out to y'all. I appreciate y'all. Now we finna jump into this story. <clears throat> what up, though? What up, though? How y'all feeling? Y'all all right? For sure. Y'all all right? Y'all ready? Is the stream messing up? What do you mean messing up, folks? What is it doing? Is the stream messing up for anybody? Is the stream messing up for anybody? Somebody said it's messing up. I want to make sure before I go in. Everybody else said it's straight. That might be your connection, Famo. I'm ready to take flight. They say, let's get, get, get it. What up, though? I'm about to go in in a minute. Give me one second. They on McDonald's Wi Fi. What up, though? What up, though? So, I'm about to tell y'all about a time my day went from lovely, from amazing, to down the drain, trash, garbage truck juice. I'm talking about, yeah, his live is glitching. Damn, man. Hold on. Is that the same person? Now, that's two people say I'm glitching. Not no more, you good? Damn, I wonder why was it glitching, though, because I don't want to get 30 minutes in and then it start acting stupid. Uh, he said it's buttery smooth. I'm just about to go in. Whoever Wi-Fi tripping is only two people that said it out of 67. So it might be uh it might be your connection. Just big shout out to Jared Jared Washington. Big shout out to you, fine. My bad. All right, anyway. I'm not I ain't even reading. If y'all send me a super chat or something, I'm gonna get you at the end of the live. And uh, cause I don't want to stop the story. This is how my day went from amazing. When I say amazing, I mean, I had all of the food sold out. I had went to store in eight people name, including mine. So my name plus seven names. And I was only keeping one store call 
and I was selling the other seven mostly to people in the hole. And I had got a drop that morning. Oh, it was an amazing day. I had got two phones that morning. Both phones came with a free world charger. When the, when, the, when the girl brought it to me, it was like this. It was a phone with a charger and she had taped it together. I had sold one of the phones already. I think I gave the dude for like 2,100 and I still had one. It was a weekend. So I really didn't care about putting it up you know, at that moment, because there wasn't nothing going on. It was a weekend, phone was on my bed. Bro, I had so much food, and people had already sent me their money either that morning or late last night, and I was just getting it organized. Some of it I haven't got together already, but for the most part, it's this dude named Tip, this blood dude that I rock with, you know what I'm saying, that I was pretty cool with. And he used to do a lot of work for me. He used to do a lot of running, taking things places, dropping things off. Tip was the, uh, what is that detail called? It's the, is it called? The, I think it's called the sidewalk orderly. And what you do basically is you walk around the prison all day. And those usually the perfect people to get to do stuff for you because they get to go everywhere. You walk around the prison all day and you just pick up trash and stuff. So Tip was coming in there. He be like, "All right, bro, I made sure such and such got it. Who gotta get some next?" And I might give him two other bags. Be like, huh? That go to such and such and such and such dorm. That go to such and such and whatever dorm. And he go back out. You know, the officers gonna let him out, especially a weekend laid back. Bro, this was an amazing day for me. I was in that kick back on the phone, talking, chopping it up, receiving all kind of cash apps. Um. And it was food everywhere, bro. I had food all on my bed. I'm laying on food. I didn't even give a damn. It was food all on the floor everywhere that I was selling. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even going to answer that. But yeah, it was food that I was selling. I had it everywhere, bro. Then the food that I was eating myself, I don't even think I had it in a locker box. I had it pushed under the bed. So now Tip is kind of slick. You know what I'm saying? He, he he got he got uh, uh a lot of little accusations on his name, but long as I know him, he ain't never did nothing slick with me. But whenever I used to have him do things that got a little more value, I always used to kind of keep an eye on Tip. You know what I'm saying? So I give Tip a bag. Man, this bag probably got like fifty dollars worth of food in it. This was a pretty big bag because dude wanted a lot of stuff like cheese puffs and you know the, the cheese puffs bag in the prison like that long like there's a lot of air in it you know how them companies be finagoing us giving us a big ass bag with a little bit of chips in it acting like we just got a whole bunch so he got a fairly big bag but i want to watch him because i don't want them to call me back talk about nothing missing out the bag you know what i'm saying so tip the dude had just sent me However much money he sent me, I was in there counting it, trying to get it right. I'm slick messing up my count. Tip go to uh, coming through the door. He like, hey, she man, you got to hurry up, bro. Hurry up. Old girl down there at the gate. She just said, bro, if I don't hurry up, if I don't come on, she about to goddamn lock the gate, bro. Come on. You got to hurry up. So all of the, the, like the rest of the food that was right here on my bed, I just go, to, I kind of counted it out already, but I didn't, I know for a fact, I'm finna give him a little bit too much. Because I ain't got time to count it. I, I, I kind of got an overall on how much it is. But, bro, I just go to grabbing the food. Two handfuls. Throwing it in there. Throwing it in there. Real quick. You know what I'm saying? Tie it up. Give it a tip. Tip. Run out the room. So I sit in there for a few seconds. I get up. Come out the room. Behind tip. I see the bag of food on the floor. I don't see tip. So I go, I go into the TV room thinking he in there. I don't know if he just had to leave it right there because it's a certain officer that might be acting monkey. So I walk all the way up to the glass and I'm looking through the glass. I don't see Tip no more. I so happen to look back. I see Tip walking down the range, like, like walking in the area to by where my room was at. But his room was on the bottom range all the way in the back. But he was coming like this way, coming back up the steps. But all I know I seen was him coming from by my room. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, what the fuck? What is you doing, Tip? So I come out. I'm like, bro, what is you doing? He like, no, bro, I forgot something. I had to run to my room and grab something real quick. So he get the bag. The girl popped the door. He go out there. He go on about his business. 
come back in the room, kick back, get back on the phone, doing me for a minute. Tip come back in there probably 30 minutes later. He like, bro, everything good. He got it. I'm like, all right, bet. So I give him, I think I gave him some uh some Chris Brown, a little bit of Chris Brown, a little bit of Al Green. He gone about his business. About an hour or so later, somebody texts me because I had sent out a bunch of text messages earlier. I was like, hey, I got these phones for sale. I got these phones for sale, whatever the case is. So they like, hamburger, skateboard. I'm like, skateboard with the charger. Whenever the charger come with it, you got to charge more. Because they buy the charger separate for a whole lot of bread. So dude texts me. He like, hey, you, uh, you still got a phone for sale? He was like, I got the bread right now. So I'm like, yeah, I got to have 22. So he was like, bro, I got 2,000. That's all I got. But I know them dudes who be rich, who be having that paperwork, they be trying to play stupid and play crazy, act like they ain't got no money. So I'm like, well, I got to have 2,200. I can't, I can't go for nothing else. So he was like, bro, I'm telling you, bro, all I got to my name is two racks. So I was trying to stall him out for a man. I'm like, man, I'm not about to get that man in the damn phone. Two racks, and I know he got it. I ain't like he ain't got it. But then I went to thinking, how much I paid for it. You know what I'm saying? I think I, the way I worked the play out, I think I ended up paying probably about $800 for it from the dude that I went through. So I'm like, bro, even two racks is going to be an amazing profit. So I hit him back. I'm like, hey, yeah, I got it, bro. I got it. I'll send it to you. So he like, all right, the cash app, the same, because he done bought stuff from me before. I'm like, yeah, it's the same cash app. Just go ahead and scroll that. So he sent the money. So I go out the room, I holler for Tip. I'm like, say, Tip. So he come down there to the room. He like, what's up, bro? I'm like, hey, bro, I might need you to slide this phone to such and such. I'm like, if you want the cash out, I already know he wanted $100. He, we already know. Anything dealing with a phone, he want $100. So I'm like, I don't know if you want me to give you the bread on cash app or if you want me to give it to you and Chris Brown or Al Green or whatever, you think you could get out? So he was like, I don't know. Hold on, let me go try to holler at old girl. So he run up there. He had the booth talking to her for about 10 minutes. He come back down and he like, come on with it, CBL. So we go in my room. I go looking on my bed, moving the stuff around on my bed. You don't see the damn phone. What the hell going on? I go lifting up the pillow, get down on my hands and knees because I had food under the bed. I'm like, it probably fell off my bed on the side of the bed. I go pulling all the food out. It ain't there. I go in my locker box. Now I tear my whole locker box up about two, three different times. So Tip standing at the door, you feel me, looking crazy. He like, damn, CB, you ain't, you ain't misplaced it or nothing, did you, bro? He like, damn, bro, I hate to be in here now while you looking crazy, because she, I don't, I don't even, even want to come up in the, in the conversation like Tip might got nothing. Like, bro, why is you even saying stuff like that? You know what I'm saying? So you starting to get suspect to me off the dribble anyway. So I got my phone. I don't got the phone that I had for sale. You know what I'm saying? I know for a fact because uh, Joe Dirt and another one of my guys named Slick, they do stuff like that sometimes. Like they've done this before. I done came in my room looking for my candy bar and it wasn't in there. And then I'll go crazy looking for it. And then Joe Dirt will give me the candy bar and be like, thanks, you need to tighten up. So what they'll do to try to keep you on point, if they see you lacking, like you leave your phone, you leave your candy bar, they'll take it just so you can feel the anxiety of it's gone. You know what I'm saying? So I shoot straight to Joe Dirt room. This, we wasn't roommates at this time. I shoot straight to his room. I knock on the door, open the door before he even say anything. He's sitting down doing something on his phone. I'm like, hey, bro, come on with my phone. Stop playing with me, bro. So he looking up at me all crazy, talking about folks, what the? You talking about, I'm like, bro, come on with my phone. Stop playing with me. I got a sale. I got somebody finna buy it. Come on with that. Stop playing. I know you came and got it because I left it on the bed. Come on with the phone. Stop playing with me, bro. So they're like, folks, I ain't got your fucking phone. I'm like, Joe Dirt, listen. Look at me, G. Look at me. So he like, I'm looking at you. So I'm like, bro, stop playing with me. I know you playing. I know you, I guess you feel like you so-called looking out for me or whatever the case Bro, stop playing with me. Give me my phone. I got some business to handle. I know I was slipping by leaving it on the bed. Give me my phone, bro. So he's insuring me 100% facts he don't got my phone. I'm like, bro, put that on GD. You ain't got my phone. He's like, that's on GD. I'm like, boss it up then. So it's, you know, a little thing he had to do to prove that he didn't have my phone or whatever. 
So I shoot straight out the room. Now I'm mad. The dude tip still standing outside my door. Now I'm looking at him like, shit, man, he probably came here and got it. When I was in the TV room, that's why he was over here trimming around by my door. I shoot straight to slick room. I walk in there, he in there like he sleep. Woke him up. Hey, G. So he jumping up. What the hell wrong with you? I'm like, give me my phone. Stop playing with me, bro. He like, man, what is you talking about, G? I'm like, give me my phone. Stop playing with me, bro. They're like, man, ain't nobody got your phone. But he's smiling. I'm like, listen, Slick. Bro, this shit y'all be doing, talking about somebody slipping, you trying to keep a nigga on point. That's cool and dandy. But right now, I'm not playing, bro. Give me my phone. It's either you or Joe Dirt. Y'all the only two that would have did that. Come on with that, bro. I got something to do real quick. He like, but that's old GD. I ain't got your phone, bro. So I'm like, boss it up. So he did the same thing Joe Dirk did. And you know, at that point, you can't lie. You can't play. You got to be dead serious. And when he did that, bro, it's like I felt my blood boil. I felt like my insides started getting hot, bro. Shot back out the room. Now, my whole life, it's been situations that I be losing stuff. I ain't going to lie. Your hand moves quicker than your eye. Sometimes you do something and don't even remember looking at it. So I went walking back to the room. When I walk in, a dude tip come in there behind me. That means uh, it's, it's, it's something you're doing like you're swearing to something a certain type of way. When you when you do it, you lock in it and you swear to something that you will never got down. You can't lie. You got to be dead serious. I shoot back in the room. Tip come in behind me. He's still standing at the door. So he go to looking all around the toilet. So what I start doing, I'm like, bro, calm down. Calm yourself down because you tripping. Just move very slow. You know for a fact it was right here. It got to be caught up in some of this blanket. So I take the first blanket that was balled up. I open it up. Do it like that. It ain't there. I ball it up to a ball. Throw it over here on the floor. I take the pillowcase. Do it like this. It ain't there. Throw it right there on the floor. I take my other blanket off the bed very carefully trying to see if I hear it fall or anything like that. Pick it up, shake it, throw it right there on the floor. By that point, I look back, the door swinging open, Joe Dirt walking in. He looking crazy as hell. He looking confused and everything. He go to looking at Tip. So he like, folks, you ain't got your phone for real, folks. So I don't say nothing to him because I'm like, bro, you see I'm not playing. You see I'm dead serious. So now I go to pulling at the sheet. He like, folks, your fucking phone's right there. I look down on the bed. He's talking about my phone, my actual phone that I use. He don't know that I'm talking about the phone that, um, that I hadn't, that was brand new, that I hadn't sold yet. So I just looked up at him. I said, I'm not talking about that phone, bro. It's another phone that I just got in this morning. It ain't right here. So I pull the sheet off the bed or whatever, lift the bottom of the mat up because I got a knot tied in it. I got to untie it, do it on both sides of the mat, take the sheet off, shake the sheet. It ain't there. Throw it on the floor. The rest of the little food, it been went on the floor. I grab the mat, lift the mat up very carefully. No phone. So I start pushing in the mat thinking I'm tripping because I know sometimes I be hiding stuff, bro. And, and, and been there damn near forgot where I put it at. I'm just making sure it's not in this mat nowhere. It's not in there. But I was holding the mat. I picked the mat back up and just slung it over there towards my house. I turned around. I looked at Tip. I say, hey, Tip, I got a lot of love for you, bro, and I rock with you, and I don't want to have to take it there with you, bro. With all due respect, get out my room, bro. And he was like, damn, CB, but he was walking to the door. He had to respect it, you know what I'm saying? He left out the room. Joe Dirk standing. He like, folks, what the hell? So I'm explaining to him the situation. So he like, Lord, have mercy. I'm like, Joe Dirk, go get the fire, bro. Go grab the fire. Now, you know, I had a candy bar, but it was a certain spot. And Joe Dirk was about the only one of us that could fit in the spot. And that's where all of our candy bars. I'm talking about for me and all my guys, we probably have about 13 candy bars now. So he shoot out the room. And bro, I sit down on the metal slab and I'm just sitting there like this. And I'm thinking, I'm rubbing my chin. I'm like, bro, you got to be, you got to be certain about this 100% because you go out here and flip somebody, boy. It ain't no taking it back. 
It ain't no taking it back, but I'm talking about it ain't no taking it back. You got to do what you got to do. And then I just went to thinking like, I've been in this position where I've been feeding everybody, bro. Like literally every gang in this dorm, I have helped these people get phones. I done gave them great prices on stuff so they can build up their own little situation or whatever. I have helped everybody in this dorm, but I've been, been in a position so long where so many people looking up to me it's gotten to the point where I've been respected. I didn't even have to do too much crazy stuff. After you do crazy stuff so long and you reach a certain level and now you look that kind of like big homie, you don't even really got to put in work no more for real, for real. You have other people willing to do it for you. So now I'm thinking, these niggas think you pussy. You have been doing this for quite some time, like just being kicked back. You ain't got too many more years before you go home. These niggas think you pussy because they haven't seen you pluck nobody in a long time. They ain't seen you put in no work in a long time. And I'm really thinking, these niggas think I'm pussy. Somebody in real life came in here and took my phone. Knock at the door. I turn around. I'm like, yo, it's tip. Now I'm like, now tip, now for you to be... For you to be innocent, you just doing too much. He stuck his head in the door. He said, hey, bit, bro, I ain't trying to bother you. Feel me? I, I know you mad as hell and shit. He was like, but look, bro, I, I just wanted to tell you this. I just wanted to drop this one little uh, this one little piece of shit on you. So I'm like, what's up, bro? I'm feeling like he, he seen something. I'm like, what's up, bro? He was like, bro, whenever somebody steals something from you, especially something valuable like that, he said, bro, nine times out of ten, it's somebody who close to you, bro. He said, bro, I just wanted to tell you that and let you keep that in mind. He left out the room and closed the door. I sat back down. I went to thank it. I said, that's true. That's very true. I said, bro, I know Joe Dirt ain't stole nothing from me. And then I'm thinking about Slick. But these damn, they're the only two that just be in my room 24-7, bro. Like, I done real life woke up one morning slipping. I done woke up, Joe Dirk done been sitting on the toilet in my room before we was roommates smoking a cigarette. While I'm in here sleep, he like, facts, I knew that smoke was going to wake your bald-headed ass up. So I'm sitting back thinking now, like, damn, bro. I know them folks ain't crossed me out like that. Not dirt, not goddamn sleep. You know what I'm saying? Joe Dirk come back in there. He got all my guys with him. Throw all the candy bars on the metal slab part of the bed. So everybody looking crazy. Probably about seven of them, including me. It was like eight of us. Everybody looking crazy. They're like, what's up, bro? You, you, your phone, woo, woo, woo. So they all looking crazy because they see one phone. So I'm like, bro, I explain the whole situation again. I'm like, bro, listen, bro. I'm not playing with nobody, bro. And I said, bro, I hate to, you feel me? I hate to even put any of you in this category or whatever the case is, bro. I said, bro, but if I find out, bro, any one of you guys got my phone, if I find out y'all have any knowledge of who got my phone, if I find out y'all seen anything and ain't nobody said nothing, I promise you on everything I stand on, I'm not fighting nobody. I'm slanging on. And that means pulling somebody out with the candy bar. So, you know, it's a few of them like, nah, nigga, you know, we ain't got nothing to do with whatever the case is. So one of the guys like, shit, bro, just just, just uh, check your tracks. Let's go out here and just see, you know what I'm saying? I leave out the room, all of us, bro, we walking around, we looking all on the thing, on the floor, we looking in the shower. He like, where the last place you was at? I was like in the TV room, bro. We go in the TV room, we looking everywhere, we can't find it. So now you got the other groups looking at us crazy because they see us grouped up and we all walking around. And bro, I walked out the TV room away from them guys and I came back down out of my room. The candy bar I had, it was kind of wide and slightly dull. I used to kind of like my candy bars to be a little pinch of dull on it because if I really go flip somebody, I'm not trying to kill you folks. I'm trying to take my ass home. So if it's dull, as long as it's enough to bust you and have you pulled out, I'm cool with it. But when they be super sharp, those be the ones that be killing people. Now I went over there to the bed, picked up one of them rods, super duper sharp. It ain't got no ridges in it or nothing. That means it's going to go as far as I push it. 
super, super sharp at the end. But I grabbed the rod, tied the little thing around my hand, walked out the room. When I walked out the room, Joe Dirt was trying to come back in the room. I kind of pushed past him. Now you got people really looking. I'm out here with the candy bar. So a few of my guys see me, they go to pulling theirs out because they like shit, whatever, whoever breath and pop on. And that's why it's so important. That's why I'm so glad that, you know, most of the time I always felt like a leader because it's like, if that was the other way around, I would have, you know, and I see one of my guys snatch out the candy bar, I probably would have tried to stop him. Like, hold on, bro. Hell no, we got to get some more information. Nobody tried to stop me, bro. Everybody was like, shit, whatever he on, we on. You know what I'm saying? I went out into the dorm. You got people sitting on the bench watching TV. You got other people just standing up there, whatever. I snatched the cord out the first TV. That's how you get the whole dorm attention. You just go pull the cord from the TV, whatever they watching. It, it makes the dorm get quiet so they can hear what's ever being said. I snatched the cord out the first TV. And, bro, I felt my eyes watering up, bro. And that's something that, you know, it's been like that since I was a kid. If I get super, 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 super mad, bro, I get nervous. My eyes will start tearing up. My hands might shake a little bit. And, bro, I felt like I was about to cry, bro. I know that sounds like some real sucker stuff right now, but it wasn't on no crying because I'm scared of nobody. It was crying. I just was angry. I was so upset that. Somebody really tried me like that. Man, I walked over there to the second TV, <clears throat> snatched the cord out the TV. I had took a few deep breaths so my voice don't sound like it's cracking. I said, hey, man, attention dawn, man. Attention dawn, man. And I got the candy bar in my right hand, long rod. I said, bro, anybody that I find out had the audacity to come into my room and take my property. I ain't got to say what it is because whoever took it, you know what it is. Whoever came in this room and took my property, bro, if I find out who it is, I put that on GDN. I am going to pull your ass out the worst way. I'm not going to play no games with you. I don't give a if you in the gang. I don't care if you old, young, bro. I don't care about none of that. Whoever I find out came in the room and took my property that's on boss i'm gonna pull your ass out simple as that so now you got all kind of people saying what the hell what, what going on cb cb what, what they took cb cb what they took so i shoot back in the room i don't even want to talk because you know the same nigga helping you look for it to be the same nigga that uh stole so when i go back in the room i hear tip out that spaz he like, man, that boy CB a good nigga, bro. CB a too good of a nigga for somebody to play games with him like that, bro. He said, that ain't even film. That ain't even my business. That ain't even one of my homies. I told y'all, tip of blood. He said, that ain't even one of my homies, bro. But that's on blood, bro. That man find out or whoever he feel, however he feel, whoever he pop on, I'm popping on your ass too, boy. That's on blood. I'm riding with the GDs today, boy. So, you know, the bloods go to huddling up and stuff. They go to calling tip like tip. Tilt trying to get him over there and stuff. He bucking on him. He like, man, I don't give about none of that, bro. Man, that man feel like somebody stole his phone. Bro, that's on blood. I'm going to pull your ass out with him. If CB will pull out anybody today, I'm pulling your ass out too. I mean, it was cool to know that, but I didn't give a damn because I was slick thinking, shit, he making them loud announcements. He might be the one guy. I know you ain't going to pull your damn self out. So I'm just in the room. Plenty of people come into the room pissing me off, bro. Because it's like, I don't know who got it. I don't know who got it. AC Bill, AC Bill, AC Bill, bro, you straight, bro, you found, bro, what it was you was looking for. The last dude who came to the room was this Muslim dude named White Ock. White Ock is not white. He's super light skinned, like super, super, super. So they call him White Ock, Muslim dude. Uh, he had a lot going on. He had stuff for sale, all kind of stuff. He was pretty respected in the dorm. He like, AC Bill, uh, peace and blessings to you, brother. That's what he said when he walked in the room. But I was so mad. I said, hey, listen, bro, fuck all that peace and blessing shit. Get out my room, bro. I don't want to talk to you. Get out my room, bro. But like I'm saying, I'm trying to help you. I said, how you going to help me out, bro? He was like, what is it that you miss? I said, my phone. 
So he looking on the bed because he see that phone. I say, not that phone, bro. It's another phone. I had another phone with the charger tape to it. Somebody got it, bro. I don't want to talk to nobody. I'm on I'm, I'm my mind somewhere else, bro. Get out my room, bro. He leave out the room. I'm sitting there. Everybody know just leave me alone, bro. Ain't nobody else coming. Then I hear Joe Dirt a couple times talk about, no, just, just wait. Just come back later. Come back later. So Joe Dirk stands outside my room just so can't nobody come in there, you know, disturb me. He just telling everybody, don't fuck with him right now. Leave him alone. Don't fuck with him right now. Uh, leave him alone. Come back later. Come back later. Stuff like that. But I'm just sitting there, just sitting there, just sitting there thinking. I hear Joe Dirk arguing with somebody. Man, I told you, come back later. You see the man ain't in the goddamn mood. And the other dude keeps saying stuff. Man, I went and pushed the door open. It was Tip. Tip trying to come in here and talk to me. Bro, I went out there standing right there at the door. I made another announcement. I say, hey, listen, bro. Listen, if you is not G-D-N, leave me the fuck alone. I don't want nobody in my room. Come getting ready to pull one of you niggas ass out. And I'm trying to think of who it's going to be. Bro, leave me alone. If you're not GD, stop coming to my room. And then Tip was looking at me like, damn, bro. I'm like, man, I don't care about none of that. I go back in the room, Joe Dirt closed the door for me. Bro, tell me why I hear somebody say, why he making all them announcements? He need to put an address on that shit. So whenever somebody say put an address on it, that means say exactly who you're talking about. Call somebody's name out instead of uh, just making announcements to everybody. Say directly who you're talking about. So I hear Joe Dirk saying, hey, man, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Man, I was mad at him. I shot out the room, pushed past Joe Dirk. I already knew it was one of them fucking Gap gang members. I told y'all Gap stands for gay and proud. And it's like they're a real gang. I shoot out the room, bro. Now, the dude standing up there on the top rank, this is a big, swole, black dude. But, you know, very, very, very feminine-like. You know what I'm saying? Big, swole, black dude, wear glasses, got waves. I shoot out the room. I'm like, say what? Say what? So one of my guys like, no, it's ch chill, bro. Chill. I'm like, man, let me go, bro. So I go walking around the thing. I walk up on the top floor. I'm like, say what? Say what now? Who said that? You said do what now? So when I say that, the other gap dudes started coming out of the room. Other people started coming out. So the dude was like, I said, instead of you saying it, trying to tell people to do this and that, that, you need to put an address on that shit. That don't need to become the whole darn problem. That ain't even got nothing to do with the whole darn C bill. Pissed me off so bad. I say, bitch ass nigga, you the address. How about that, nigga? You, you'll become the address, nigga. The dude turned and shot to his room with the door open, but in an aggressive manner. When they do that, that's somebody going to grab the candy bar or going to get ready for some smoke. Man, I took off running up them steps. So when I take off running up the steps, you got the Bloods, the GDs, the Muslims was already upstairs. The GDs was on this floor where I was at. The Bloods was downstairs. They all take off running, bro, from both sides of the steps. Now, his room is, like, closer to this side of the steps, but I was on the top of the bottom floor. I was closer to this side of the steps, so I shot up this side of the steps trying to run that way. You got the, some of my guys, they take off running up that side of the steps. The Bloods come running up this side of the steps, and the Muslims, they running this way towards the, the, the Gap Gang people. It's probably about five of them out there. And, you know, they clutching. They got candy bars, locks, whatever it is they got. And the Muslim dude that came trying to talk to me earlier, white out, he like, see, man, just listen, bro. Just listen to me. Once I made it upstairs, that's what he's saying while all his people walking down this, running down this way. He like, see, man, just listen to me, bro. Just chill. Just think, brother. You got to think with a clear mind. I'm like, white out, bro. Get the fuck out my face. I don't want to hear all this clear mind bullshit. Bro, I was too blowed, bro. So I finally get down here. You got all these people in between us. The dude done went in the room, snatched off his shirt. Man, got like some little titties. I guess he taking hormone shots. Man, got some damn titties hanging out. Talk about some. Come on in. Come on. <laughs> I swear to God. He said, come on in. Come on in and shoot me a one. Come on in and fight. Come on in and shoot me a one. 
but all of these people is in between us. I'm like, man, I'm not doing no fight. Like, I'm real life trying to break through these people. Bro. It's probably about 30 people in between, like, this dope trying to tell me, no, nah, bro, they holding me back, twisting my wrist back and shit. I'm like, nigga, I'm going to kill you, nigga. I ain't doing no fight, nigga. I'm not trying to fight nobody, especially not you. I'm going to kill you, nigga. So he like, be a man. Be a man and shoot me a one. Be a man and shoot me a one. I'm like, man, all that, bro. I'm trying to bust through this door and get off in here, bro. And uh, there's too many people, bro. I can't get past all these people. You know what I'm saying? So one of the other uh gap members that was standing right there it looked to me as if he was trying to um like swing on me or something all i know i just seen movement out my peripheral when i seen movement out of my peripheral bro i went to swing in the candy bar i hit him once in the shoulder the other one i tried to hit him in the face but the other dude had went pulling him back already so I had got him again up here in the shoulder area. When I did that, that's when my guys really, like real life, snatched me and pulled me this way. Once I got closer to this side where the Muslims was at, I seen the few other Gap dudes, like had their arms around him and pushing him into the room, I guess finna patch him up. So now I'm thinking like, damn, you know, I've seen y'all go to war with people. I've seen, I know for a fact these guys ain't no sucker. They gay, but they ain't no suckers. I know for a fact, you know, they'll stand on business. I think the reason they didn't try to pop back is because they felt like the GDs, the Bloods, and the Muslims is like going to ride on us all together. And that's just too many people. It probably was like 40 of us all together, bro. You know what I'm saying? So they probably felt like it's just too many people. The dude that's inside the room starts crying and screaming even louder. This man talk about, you don't bust my mother, my sister. Nigga, come here and shoot the one. Be a man. I better I beat your ass. You don't stab my mother, my sister. So I'm trying to break through them still. I'm like, man, I'm finna kill this bitch ass nigga. Like, bro, bro, if I would have got through that to that dude, but I probably would have made a very, very, very foolish decision, bro, because I was too mad. I had the candy bar. By this time, they had done snatched it from me anyway. They snatched it out of my hand at this point. So now I can't do nothing. There's too many people pushing me back. Too many people, bro. I can't do nothing about it. Uh, Eventually, they convinced me to come back down here, walk down the steps. I go back in the room. I'm just blow, bro. Joe Dirt was in there talking to me. He like, folks, you need to lock your door and you, you just need to think, folks. You need to stay in your room. You don't need to come out your room. I'm like, Joe Dirt, get the fuck out my face. Cause now I'm starting to wonder if 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 one of you niggas got it. So Joe Dirt spazzed out. He was like, folks, don't ever fucking try me like that. He said, I ain't never been nothing but loyal to your ass. I ain't never stole nothing from you. Don't ever try me like that. I'm like, bro, I don't care about nothing you talk about. Get out my room, folks. That's all. only thing I want you to do. Get out my fucking room. So Joe Dirt turned around. He leave out the room. Probably about 10 minutes later, he came back in there. He had a bag full of ice that he had got out of the ice cooler. He came over there. He said, folks, here's some ice for you. I'm about to lock your door. You just need to chill your ass out, relax, and we're going to try to get to the bottom of this. I said, Joe Dirt, don't lock my door, bro. So he walking, like walking out the door. He like, no, because you're tripping right now, folks. I said, how the fuck I'm tripping? A nigga done stole my phone. Do not lock my door, folks. I said, bro, if you lock my door, I promise we're going to have to fight. So he's walking out. He's not saying nothing. So I jump up because Joe Dirt ass be playing. So I get like, I'm getting ready to run to the door. The man slammed the door shut, bro, and it locked my door. And my door didn't pop. The officer had to unlock it for me. Bro, I was so mad, bro. Joe Dirt turned and looked at me through the glass. He was like, folks, your ass need to chill out. Chill out for a while. Give, give me a minute, folks. Let me try to figure out what the hell is going on here. So I said, what's going on? A nigga came in my room and stole my phone, nigga. What you mean was going to, he like, folks, your ass about to start a war or something. Just chill out. Let me get this figured out. So I'm like, bro, I don't already bust the gap, nigga. You're going to lock me in the room. So if there's any smoke, y'all got to deal with it. He like, and we sure will goddamn it deal with it. You just chill your ass out for a while. We can't afford you leaving. 
like I told you, bro, I mean, at this point, Joe Dirt kind of had his own motion. He had some things going on in his own. But for the majority of people, I promise you, bro, I was looking out for that whole dawn. Even the Muslim dude, I'm the one helped him get his first phone and helped him get himself together. So I told Joe Dirt, I said, bro, when this dope pop, you got to fight me, bro. You must fight me. There's no way I don't want to fight you when this dope pop, bro. So he was like, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. So he go to walking off, pissed me off, bro. So I go to walking laps back and forth, back and forth in the room. I'm mad as hell. I don't went to punch in the box a few times. So I called Big Bruh, who was, uh, I called Big Bruh, who was over the count. I'm like, hey, folks, I just explained the whole situation to him. He's so with it. Rest in peace to him. Feel me? He was like, uh, shit, what you going to do about it? So I'm like, bro, at this moment, I don't really know who did it. You feel me? He was like, man, that nigga tip. That nigga tip slick, boy. That nigga tip think he slick. We put his ass on the door about two years ago, and they say he was stealing. He said it probably would tip. But shit, if you're going to pull out tip, just let me know so we could be on point with the blood niggas over here. He just was with any form of bullshit. So I'm like, all right, say let hang up with him. I eventually end up making my bed back up, but I was so sick just to know somebody tried me like that. So I lay down in the bed. I didn't even want to talk on the phone. I just had the phone on my chest. I lay down on the bed and I was just thinking about the prices on everything. I said, everything doubling. The amount of Chris Brown I've been selling niggas for 25 is going to 50. The amount of Al Green that was going for 50 is going for 100. I'm finna rape the game because I know for a fact they don't got the source I got. Sometimes the count be dead dry unless me, big bro, or the dude, one of the dudes that's on the tier program end up pulling something out. Besides that, the, it, the whole prison, I promise you, be dead dry. And I said, bro, I'm about to rape the game. I'm about to tax these niggas so hard, bro, because somebody just tried me like that. They finna buy me a $2,000 phone 10 times before I decide to take the price back down or something. I'm laying there just thinking hard, thinking hard, and that thing, you know, I end up dozing off. Fell asleep. I wake up when I hear the key turning. I hear the lock, like the, the, the lock turn. That's when I'm opening my eyes. First thing I look at is the window. I don't know why the hell I wasn't looking at the door. First thing I look at is the window to the right, and I see it's dark. So I know I've been asleep for a minute. It's dark. It ain't even daytime no more. So then the next thing I do, I'm jumping up looking for my phone. My phone right here on my chest, but the lady, Miss E, that was working, she cool as hell. She done came in there multiple times and seen me on the phone. She ain't give a damn. And she walked in the room, and she was like, see? See, you slipping. I was jumping up. The phone was falling off my chest. She was like, see? You slipping. You need to tighten up. So I'm like, damn, my bad. I throw the phone in my pocket. I'm like, what's up, Miss E? She was like, you straight? I was coming in here to check on you. Goddamn, I seen you spazzing out early. I was like, yeah, I'm straight. She's like, I'm getting ready to go home. I was just checking on you, make sure you were straight. I ain't know what the hell was going on. I ain't want to call the code, and it wasn't nothing. I said, no, nah, it ain't nothing, man. I got down. It ain't nothing. She was like, well, shit, somebody out here at the gate trying to holler at you. I said, I don't want to talk to none of them niggas. She said, no, nah. he said, you need to get out here. I said, man, I don't want to talk to them. I don't care about none of that. So she was like, all right, bet. I was just letting you know before I dip, because you whatever you need to handle, you can go and handle it. So I'm like, nah. So I'll go back out there. So... No, I didn't go out there. She go back out there. I'm still sitting on the bed. So I'm stretching out. I go looking at my phone, going through my phone. Next thing you know, Joe Dirt. Folks, I'm like, what, bro? He like, hey man, that goddamn uh that 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 whole orderly's out there talking about he need to holler at you. It's very, very, very important. He said he got something for you. So I jump up. Now I'm thinking, you feel me? Oh, he he might finna tell me something. So this is what it is in my mind. One of these niggas done came and got my phone and tried to sell it to somebody in another dorm. Tried to sell it to somebody in another dorm. And then because I called Big Bird earlier, whoever it is, they come in to tell me who it is in my dorm that tried to sell it to them. So as soon as I come out the room, I see the gap dudes all standing up there. Even when I bust, I see them all just standing up there in the group looking crazy. So I shoot up there, Miss East still in the booth. So she waved me down. So I came over there. She was like, hey, whatever you got to do, bro, do that shit fast because my relief getting ready to come on. And when she come on, I got to have all y'all locked back down in the thing. So I go out here. It's this old school bald headed ass dude that's in the, uh, he's the whole orderly. He working the whole. 
And I go out there on the on the porch. I'm like, what's up, bro? What's going on? He said, man, boy, boy, I want two hundred and fifty dollars. He said, boy, I want two hundred and fifty dollars. I said, two hundred and fifty dollars for what? That man went in his pocket, had the phone and the charger, handed it to me. I look at, it, I stick it in my pocket. I'm like, boy, where the fuck you get this from? He said, nigga, you cashed somebody out on some food earlier, and that goddamn that phone was in the bag with that. And he gave it back to me and said, oh, hell no, nah. get this back to CBL. This had to be an accident. I said, bro, you lying. He said, I swear to God, he gave it to me earlier, but I'm just not getting off work. He said, bro, I want $250, bro. He said, I'm going to hit you up when I get to the dawn. I said, I got you, bro. Say less. I got you, bro. Say less. So I came back in there. Joe Dirt came down there to the room. He's like, what do you want it, folks? And I told him, showed him the phone. He was like, oh, my fucking God. Oh, my fucking God. He was like, folks, you got me so fucking mad. Now I want to fight your ass. I want to shoot you a one. I was like, man, get the fuck out of my room, bro. You don't want these problems, Joe Dirt. So he's like, man, you need to roll up a fucking cigarette or something. So I roll up a fat ass cigarette, lighted me and Dirt, go to smoking it. And then Joe Dirt looked at me when the cigarette was about half gone. He was like, folks, you owe deliciousness and apologize. I was like, bro, watch out, bro. Watch out. Get out of my face. Now he want to be funny and try to play these games. That ain't even a dude name. He just said that because he part of the Gap game. So it was like, bro, you owe him apology for real. Like, that's what he was saying. So all my guys end up coming in there. And, uh, you know, once I told them, they all was like, shit, bro. Yeah, you got to, you really need to apologize to the Dawn, bro. That's what everybody said. They was like, bro, you need to apologize to the Dawn. So I stood up. I was like, damn, bro. So I grabbed my phone that I used, and I went to my cash shop and was just looking at it. I think I had like 900 on. I mean, I had more bread than that, but on the cash shop, I had like 900. And I was like, I know I'm about to have to pay somebody. And uh, the dude I popped and possibly the other dude. And I mean, I don't have to pay them nothing, but I'm going to just do that as you know kind of like a peace treaty to accept my apology because everybody want money everybody go crazy about money and bro i told dirt to come with me dirt and slick they came upstairs with me i went up there first i stopped at the uh at the muslim dude room and i went in there he was like what's up bro and i explained it to him he was like you for real and i was like bro i just got to humble myself and, and apologize to you bro for talking crazy to you you feel me, bro? Because you ain't, you ain't even deserve that, bro. You feel me? And he was like, man, it's all good, man. Peace and blessings, brother. You know, Allah always going to make sure. I was like, all right, bro. All right. And I went to walking out of the room. I don't want to hear about all that. So I leave out the room. We go walking down here. The Gap Gang dudes, they all standing outside the room. And now one of them went back in the room. They all standing here because they don't know what we on. So now when they see us three walking up, they go to kind of like, getting on point or whatever so joe dirt and slick walked in front of me they went and talked to him and then um the dude that was trying to fight me and the dude that i pulled out they both went in the room and then joe dirt and slick went in there they left the door wide open and then joe dirt did me like that and i went in there and i was just like hey bro listen i just want to apologize i was looking at the dude that i bust i was like bro you know the situation the way things was playing hey i just thought that it was this and it really wasn't that going on i want to apologize to you bro i don't want no smoke you feel me i don't want a situation where we got to be uncomfortable and be and be watching each other and, and being on point to each other or whatever the case i was like so my my apology slash peace treaty is i give you 500 on cash app bro and that's just you feel me i, I ain't had no business doing that bro and then he was like, he was like, you for real, you for real. Then the other dude was standing up there talking about shit. I need me about five hundred too. I was like, no, I got a hundred for you. I got bro five hundred. Cause I stabbed him. He could do some sucker shit, like run to the police and tell him. But I'm gonna give you five hundred. He was like, hell yeah, shit. I sent it to him right there and there. Sent him the hundred. And she Ock was already straight. That's why I ain't offered him none. He had plenty of money already anyway. And then I went back down there to the room and I was just like, damn, bro. Do you know? The rest of the night, it was just other people. As people found out that I got it, they all was coming to the room. Like, damn, Bill, man, you were tripping, bro. You were tripping. I was like, yeah, man, it was all good, bro. You feel me? But I had just thought about that. And I know I was dead wrong, but shit, that's just, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. And I wanted to tell y'all that. 
And and I think that's what my, my daddy told me a long time ago. He said, the hand moves quicker than the eye. And I was like, what does that mean? He said, sometimes, bro, you be just moving so fast, doing stuff. You've been doing something, put something somewhere, and you don't remember seeing it. You don't remember it. And then when you find it, you would think about it like, damn, I was over here doing something. So when 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 uh, Tip was rushing me and I went to grabbing handfuls of the food, I grabbed the phone. The phone must have been mixed up in a honey bun, some chips or something. I just grabbed it and threw it in there somehow. And uh, I think I gave Tip $100 too. I gave Tip $100 too. And uh, yeah, bro. But let me uh, go find these super chats. Corey, I'm about 20 minutes behind on this live, but I just wanted to show some love. You did amazing on that interview. Appreciate that, family. I really appreciate that. It's another super chat. Let me find it real quick. Free design of my favorite storyteller on YouTube. Shout out to Bill Feezy. Thank you, family. I appreciate you for that support. Uh, Yeah. Darius Coleman, much love, bro. Thank you, family. I appreciate that. Thanks for supporting the channel, bro. Bill was the one that got away for real. Okay, Purple Moon Sunflower. Did you still end up doubling up on the prices? Nah, hell nah. And then I did go out there, you know, after everybody was saying stuff to me, I did go out there and I said, hey, man, attention, Dawn. Tension dawn, man. I just wanted to apologize to everybody, bro. I apologize for acting a damn fool. And you know, that's when people start laughing and kicking it and uh, you know, just going back to the normal kicking it like we usually do. But I just wanted to tell y'all that, bro. I'm gonna I probably come back on here so we can just kick it, but the story over with. It's your boy Bill Young. You should have gave them, you should have gave the dog 20% off. 